Hi all. So I'm going to go over some some basic stuff about classes and objects, and um, and writing them. But I don't want to reproduce all the work that I, that's already in the videos that are on the Haiku page for classes and objects. So this is this is just a brief run through of some things that I think some of you may be dealing with. So this is a BlueJ project. It has three classes in it. Um, we'll get to more about multiple types of classes and how they interact and what things like the studded line are in the future. But right now I just want to show you a class that was written by one of your classmates. So this is, remember you, your job is to write a class about an entity. And this is a class about a book entity. And it should really be called book and not books because each object of this class will represent one book. And it, has a large number of attributes here. You only need to do, I think, four attributes. Um, the number is not particularly important. I just wanted you to have some practice. Um, and, the, and the attributes are stored in variables. So we have a variable like rating for the book, which is stored, stored in an integer. The book name, which is stored in a string, which is a type of variable that can hold text. A boolean is a type of variable that is true or false. And uh, so, anyway, all that. This is a, what's known as a constructor. It has the same name as the class, books. All methods, constructors, constructors of just a particular type of method, have parentheses after their name. In some cases, there are things inside the parentheses, which we'll get to in just a second. In this case, uh, there isn't. And what this method does, the constructor method, uh, it sets the variables to their starting values. Okay? And you can see it sets the integer to a zero, and it sets the strings to what's known as the empty string, which is two quotation, uh, quotation marks right next to each other. And it sets the boolean to false. Booleans can either be true or false. That's it. And so those are both false. And so it, all that, all the state of the variable, the state of those attributes are all set in constructors, right? This method is, returns a string. And what is it, where is it returning to? Don't worry about it for now. Uh, but it, it returns uh, a, the value of whatever this variable your name is. So your name is set to nothing here. This should actually return um, the name of the book, uh, just logically, not your name, but that's okay. It, key thing is that this is known as an accessor method. You have a return type here, the type that gets returned by the method. Uh, and then within the method, you write return and the variable from up in the fields, usually, it doesn't always have to be that, but usually it will be one of these field values that you're returning. Okay? Uh, here's how you get the computer to print something. You write system out println, and then inside of uh, quotation marks, and, and you can add variables in here, and it doesn't actually print your name, it prints whatever your name is equal to, and you just add them together. It's called concatenation. It's not like math adding, it's just sticking things together. Okay? And here's a second constructor, and now we can talk about these guys a bit. And these are known as parameters. They're special variables that are used to send information into methods uh, that those methods need, information that those method, methods need to do their job, right? So uh, here, instead of setting book name to always to just be the empty string, it'll set it equal to whatever is passed in. And we'll get to what that means more in a minute. But parameters, these types of variables are used to send information into methods, in this case, a, a second constructor method, so that that constructor method can do its job, okay? Here's a method that returns the rating variable. Here's a print method and Here's a method, this is interesting, that sets uh, the Boolean variable worthwhile to true if 
total rating, if the value contained in the variable total rating is greater than 28, it sets it to true, else it sets it to false, right? So this is known as a conditional statement, an if statement, uh, and it's pretty straightforward, right? If that's true, if this condition is true, you do what's inside this first set of braces. Else, if that condition is false, you do what's inside of the second set of braces. And you don't need to do um, the else if, if you don't need it. You can do just a straight if, if that is all you need to do. Okay? So that's known as a mutator method because it actually changes one of the fields. Worthwhile is a field. If you have a method that changes a field, we call it a mutator method. Okay? Cool. We'll just close that for now. Now, let's just <coughs> very quickly um, make a new project. Now, what you should do is create on your computer a folder called something like My Java Projects, right? And keep all of your work there so that you know where it is and it's well organized. So I'm going to call this one uh, Hello. Hello World. Great. Okay. So this is a project called Hello World. I'm going to make a new class in it and I'll call this class Hello. Right? And let's just quickly go through what all this stuff is. These are comments, multi line comments. They start with a forward slash, star, star, and with a star slash. You're not going to write many of these this year, but you can. And when you make a new class, when you click on that button, it sticks those in there. These are single line comments, two forward slashes, and these are actually quite useful at the level you're at because they're just ways for you to put notes about what you're doing. Right now, often when I comment on your code, I'll put a comment with these two forward slashes. Uh, the computer totally ignores both types of comments. They're there for people to, um, to document their code. So here we have a field, right? And by the way, all fields should be declared private. There are exceptions to that, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Always, when you declare a field, make it private. And it's an integer, and it's called x. Here's another one of those comments. We'll just get rid of that. There's the constructor for this class. And what that does, remember I said constructors set initial values for things. So in this case, this constructor is setting this variable x to 0. There's another long comment. This method, uh, it takes in a parameter an integer parameter, a number basically, and returns the sum of that number plus whatever x is equal to. Okay, so this is about as simple as a program you can get. Um, and so let's compile this. And it compiled, good. There are no striped lines here. And so we're going to make a new hello object. There it is. By the way, we can make lots of these, right? Uh, as many as we want, but we'll focus on this one right here. And here's that one method, besides the constructor, the constructors never show up here, that this method has. Now remember, this method wanted an, in, a, an integer value passed in as a parameter, so we're going to pass in 10, pass in anything, and we'll say OK. And remember, this method returned the sum of whatever x was, which is 0, plus 10. So it returns 10. Okay, 0 plus 10. And so when we say that a method returns a value, when we're using BlueJ like this, and we select a method that returns a value, I'll do 11 this time, and the returned value gets returned in this little dialog box. Now, what we'll find very quickly as we get into more interesting programs, is that we'll have one class, one object, basically talking to another object. And, then, and this object will say to like this object, hey, uh, run your method that does this and give me back the value. In that case, the value doesn't get returned in this little dialog box to us. The value gets returned to the other object. So you use a, when you program, you use a divide and conquer strategy. You, you break your problem up into lots of 
classes, and then you make objects of those classes, and those objects talk to each other and say, hey, can you give me this piece of information? And if they can, they send it back to this object, and that object continues on doing what it needs to do. And it may in turn be asked by some other object of some other class, hey, can you help me with something? Okay? So you, you want to get into your head this idea that we're building uh, classes up from which we will make objects, and those objects uh, talk to each other and help each other accomplish various tasks. Okay? Cool. So that that's enough for right now. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. Okay? And again, a lot of this information is covered in the other videos on classes, on the page, haiku page about classes and objects. Thanks.